Let's just go to Titus 1. Because this is a, com this is a, from a common passage where people try and say, well, your works do uh, show your faith, and your works do show your faith to God. Um, but I think if we compare it to James 2, we can, we can see that this passage, when compared to James 2, is just talking about your faith towards men. Look at verse 15. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. So people that try and uh, make, you know, works and evidence of faith or, or evidence of salvation, they'll go to this verse and they'll say, look, verse 15 says, you know, your works deny God. So your works are showing you that you don't believe on God. That's what they make that verse to me. Well, if we look at this verse in the context of James 2, we could also easily say that, well, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Well, who are they denying God to? Well, they, they could be denying God to other men. Because if you have a faith and you don't have work and you have sin in your life, your sin does deny God to other men um, if, if that's what you're doing. So your works do, you know, accept or deny God by works towards men, but not towards God, because remember when we compare it to Romans 4, we can't glory before God. Now remember that question I asked you at the beginning, if works are a way that we determine whether or not we have faith, how much works do you need to have for this verse to, to apply to that principle? Because when we look at verse 15, it says, unto the pure all things are pure. So what's the standard that is set in this if you're going to use this as a way to determine whether or not you have faith? Well, it's the standard of perfection. Because if you're pure by your works, and that's how you have faith, well, it says unto the pure, if you're trying to make that mean saved people, it says all things are pure. Not some things are pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Not just some of their works, all of their works are reprobate. So what is this passage actually teaching? Well, first of all, if we were to read these couple of verses up here, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. So I didn't read up further enough and up, up enough. But the context of Titus 1 is false prophets, first of all. And that's why false prophets, you know, these false prophets that are reprobate, this is the context in which these verses are being said. But the principle is still there, you know, unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. So what is this verse actually talking about? Well, my opinion is that it's, it's another comparison of the old man and the new man. So we have the spirit and the flesh, the spirit that's born of God that cannot sin. We have the flesh that, is, um, you know, that sins, and that's why we have our sinful desires. We have the old man and the new man, the old man that is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and the new man that is created in righteousness and true holiness. Well, we see here now a contrast between the pure and the impure. So unto the pure, all things are pure, and unto the impure, you know, nothing is pure. So the way I interpret this verse is, well, it's a comparison between, again, the new creature and the old creature, the new man and the old man, uh, the spirit and the flesh. And, you know, this, this passage here, like we said, you know, if works is going to prove our faith to ourselves, then this passage wouldn't actually comfort me. This passage would condemn me. Because to me, not all things are pure. So if all things need to be pure for my faith to be existent by works, this verse is actually condemning me and showing me that I don't have faith if that's how I'm going to interpret it. 